news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. For the time, I'm Rick Roberts. Glad you're along. Of course, you've uh, you've been listening about the uh, Richardson uh, police officer uh, who lost his life. I, I, w- I want you to think about that today. That's the reason I'm mentioning it right off right after the top of the show. Uh, you know, police officers were called to the Breckenridge Point Apartments. For a call about a disturbance, when they arrived, the suspect fires shots, hits one of the officers in the neck. He has now since passed away. I want you to think about that. They don't get to say, no, nah, I don't really want to do that. Or give that to Mike over there. Mike, Mike's not doing anything. Or, you know what? I'm really tired. I, I don't want to do that today. Or, that's a bad place, man. I, I'm, you know, send somebody else. I don't want, they don't get that option. You know, all of you, you folks out there, I hate cops, man. Uh, they're just out there looking. I want you to think about this. A woman is going to go to bed and get up in the morning without her husband. Two daughters are never going to know what it's like to have their father around um, when they get married or other functions. And why? Because he was serving us. That's why. He was serving you and serving me. He didn't know what he was walking into. No cop ever does. Do do you understand what I'm saying about this? You know, I I I talked to so many people. Well, cops, man, you know, it's just there was a story on the other night. You know, this little punk. Uh, rides around. He looks like he's like 30. By the way, if you're 30 years old, if you can grow facial hair, don't ride a bicycle or ride a skateboard, okay? It just looks stupid. But there's this uh, punk that rides around and videos cops. You know, because you never know what they're going to do. Um, and finally, he got popped himself. And he's there with his attorney, boo-hoo, and oh, I'm scared to go outside now. Uh, you know what? Just leave. We don't need we don't need you in this town. Uh, but I want you to think about this Richardson officer, and it happens everywhere. Everywhere. They don't get to say no. I don't want to go, or no. I'm too tired, or no. That's too dangerous, or that's a bad part of town, or I'd rather not. They don't get that option. They just go. It, it, that's what I want you to remember. I want you to remember that. You know, veteran police officer David Sherrard killed in the line of duty Wednesday, February 7th, 2018. Badge number 1078. End of watch 2718. I want you to think about that. Before you start calling me up and telling me, well, cops don't like black people. Cops don't like illegal immigrants. Cops don't like me. Cops don't like, cops don't like. I don't want to hear it. You want to live in a place with no law enforcement, no rules, regulations, guidelines, parameters? Be my guest. You know, you'll be begging to come home within the hour. You know, it's uh, uh, he was a 14-year veteran of the Richardson Department. Um, and I just want you to think about that. I mean, try to wrap your head around that. A man no longer goes home to his wife or his kids. They no longer see their father and husband walk through the door because he was doing his job. He chose to do that job, and good for him. We need people like that. Not everyone's wired to be a police officer or law enforcement in general. Not everyone's wired that way. He was. 
All right, let's go to uh, Jennifer. Jennifer and uh, Joshua. Jennifer, thanks for waiting. Hi. You know, uh, hello. I, I, I just have a problem with everybody. You know, the cops aren't the only ones that go to work out there. There's a lot of people that have important jobs as well, but we don't talk about them. Well, when tell they me, tell me about a few, Jennifer. Well, you know, I know people that in my town. Everybody in, in my town is important in the jobs that they okay, do. Okay. Well, tell me, tell I, me about a few of those jobs. Uh, well, there's, um, let's see, there's a, uh, a pharmacy down the road, you know, uh-huh. everybody needs, you know, medicine when they get sick. Right. But when you, you know, just say the pharmacist gets killed, you ain't going to hear nothing about that on, on the radio. No, I, gonna... no, I, I ain't. Uh, because quite honestly, pharmacy, pharmacists in general aren't usually killed by, uh, by the pills they, uh, they dispense, are they? No, no, they're not. But, okay. you know, say that uh, I, I just don't understand why everybody is I, – I, what I can't stand is everybody calling them heroes. I mean, I, w- I would go to somebody if they needed okay. help. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait a second, was, Jay. Let's, was, let's, not, let's not go too fast. Oh, All right? You yeah. don't – what is it you don't understand again? Here, people, them being called heroes, I can – I mean, I hear it so often. It's just – it's like it's overdone. They they overdo it. Okay. Well, they, well, they tell me, tell me, heroes. tell me. Excuse me. Yeah, I said they even call themselves heroes. They I, are. I go, I, you know, if I went, and I, I, I tell you what, Jennifer. If, let me right let now, me ask you something. Go ahead. If if it's four o'clock in the morning, God forbid, and I hear glass breaking in my kitchen, I'm upstairs asleep, and let's say I had a family. I I'm don't. Not. I don't. But let's say I had a couple kids down the hall, um, and a wife. Um, you know, I would, I would get my weapon. I would take up a position between the perceived threat and my family and I would call nine one and hope they got there before I had to shoot somebody. Should I call you, Jennifer? Well, I would, I would come, but you know, no, I know you, I know you wouldn't call me because it's already a a government set up program that the police come, you know, that's why the police, you're right. The police come. You know, if, if I was being threatened by somebody or if I heard, if I saw somebody being threatened Uh by somebody else. I would not run. I would go towards them to help them. What's what's even the worst? Had, what's the, the person, worst part of your town, Jennifer? The worst part of my town? The most crime-ridden part of your town. Oh uh, well, it's it's a really small town, so. Well, it, Joshua, it, I know that, but I mean, there's it, every town has a side of town you don't want to be caught in after dark. You know that. Cleburne. Uh-huh. That's where I'll say. Okay. Cleburne, right down if, the road. If somebody calls you at two o'clock in the morning, says we hear shots being fired and screams in Cleburne. Um, we need your help. Are you going to get in the car and go down there? I would. I wouldn't be scared, but that's, you know, I don't get paid for it. I don't get a paycheck for it. They okay. just get a paycheck for it. Okay, and if so, they have kids, so, maybe they shouldn't do that job. So, so what? what is it exactly that has your nose out of joint about this? Because I don't understand. It's not just this one. It's, it's hearing so much about it on the radio every time it happens. It's like, you know, my husband, I, I, you know, he's my hero. You know, but you if, if something were to happen to him, you ain't going to be hearing no, anybody say anything no, about him being a hero. But no, no, I My ain't going to probably talk about your husband because he doesn't get up every morning with a target on his back and go out and stand between innocent civilians and the bad guys. Well, I'm glad he's not that stupid. He's not that stupid. Yes, to be to to be do that job. So you think being a police no, officer? No, stupid, Jennifer. Think... Jennifer, you have to let me talk. It's called okay, called a ahead. conversation. Go so ahead. you think being a police officer in law enforcement is a stupid job? No, I don't think it's stupid. Well, that's what you just you said. And get that kind of a job that that you know what you know what to expect. You're going to be going after criminals. Yeah. So you're gonna you know they they know what 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 to expect when they get that job. Of and course they do, and job. they still take the job. I'm they ain't doing thank it God to they do. Me. They what? Because I don't call them. I, what did you say? I said they ain't doing it to protect me because I don't call them. Why? Maybe they. Well, Jennifer, maybe they ain't. But why is it you don't call the cops? I don't need their protection because I can take care of myself. Oh, I see. I got a husband that takes care of me. You yeah. know, I'm I'm not scared. Okay. I guess. Okay. Well, you may not be scared, but in my opinion, you're extremely stupid. But I never, I don't want to be ugly about that. Um, God's blessings on you, and I hope, uh, I hope you never have to need a, a police officer or a sheriff's deputy. Um, you know, maybe that's uh, maybe that's just the way it goes. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I totally disagree with your call. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say, oh, well, you got a point because you don't. You're coming from a point of 
complete idiocy. But that's my opinion, and we're all entitled to them, right? Yeah, you're right. You know, I know okay. you have law enforcement background. You tell us about it every single day on the radio. Yeah, because I think, quite honestly, I'm not. You don't have I'm no not. Wi- I'm not. I'm not wired to do it, so I didn't you have do no it. Other talking points, but to tell about yourself every day on the radio that we all know about. We hear about your family every well, why day. Well, do, why do you know? Huh? Why do you know? K nine unit and you, your daughter's. Well, married how do you know that? Because I hear it every. So you listen to my show every day even though you've got nothing to say good about it. So, Jennifer, I appreciate you being a listener very, very much. Um, and, and tell me about your family. I'd love to know about your family. What do you want to know about my family? Uh, anything. What do you want to tell me? Well, I'm I'm living here down in – I'm in Texas, and I'm, I'm a, my family's, you know, Yankees. We're Yankees. So, you know, I don't what, really what is, know what I, you want to know what about is that? Be, I, have, the, I have a lot. If you're a Yankee, you're – you're really old because that was a civil war. Where are you from? Where am I from? Um, you keep uh, asking me a question after I ask you a question. I you know that. Tell you any of that well, because that's gener- not part of the topic. Uh, I this ask a question. Topic, I ask you a question. <laughs> do you work? Do I work? Of course I do. What kind of work do you do? In in the automotive industry. Okay. I'll just say. All right. You got kids? Yes. Okay. Um, hopefully those kids will never need a law enforcement official around, be, but you're here to tell me that you and your husband can take care of that job, right? Well, no, I, I, I guess my kid will probably, uh, grow up knowing that his mom and dad will protect him until he can protect himself. Okay. So he won't need any assistance from anyone. Well, I hope not. No, I hope not. I, I gotta I- say, Jennifer, and I don't mean to be ugly at all. I really don't. But you are the dumbest woman I think I've ever talked to. All right, uh, 20 minutes after the hour. Well, that's sort of like a cup of coffee in the morning, isn't it? You, you hear about people like that, but you very rarely get a chance to get up close and personal. I couldn't believe that we were going to start the show off right off the bat with that call. Hey, I take them as they come in. By the way, if you think the calls are um, intentionally screened, they are not. They're not. We we take the calls as they come in. And uh, evidently, Jennifer uh, is a. It sounds like she's a regular listener to the show. So, Jennifer, I'll be thinking about you every time I turn the mic on. Good lord. Um, you know, I, I guess it takes all kinds. You know, some people just never grow up. Uh, Mike in Wichita Falls. Mike, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. <clears throat> I'm doing good, Rick. Yeah, this is actually in reference to Jennifer. Uh, you know, I actually feel sorry for her because I can't believe she's that stupid and ignorant. <clears throat> but at the same time, I mean, she sounds like Nancy Pelosi. But I, I feel same- sorry for the kids. Uh, I mean, well, yeah. if, if that's the but- environment they have to grow up in, then, you know, maybe they'll make it. I hope they do. Well, what I, what I gathered from her is, you know, she's probably gang-affiliated or have had problems with the cops in the past. But at the same time, besides calling cops stupid, she's calling everybody in the military stupid that served. So she doesn't even want that national defense to help her and her family. Well, it's, it, time, it, yeah, I, you can't you can't talk with You know, I've learned over the years. You can't really talk with people like that. You just, you know, kind of parry and joust verbally with them. And I wonder if her husband was ever serving in the military or and a family member because, uh, you know, she's calling them stupid, too. I, I don't know. I, I heard something at some point sounded like a guy yelling in the background. I don't know. Maybe happy hour started about two hours ago at their house and he couldn't yeah. get off the couch. But in any case... Yeah. I mean, God love her. I mean, who knows? You know, maybe the kids will uh, end up being something. Well, hopefully, you know, she, her eyes will be opened up and uh, she'll realize that uh, we need more law enforcement and we actually need uh, politicians to support the cops doing their job. Well, I, I agree. But, you know, the really sad part is, um, you know, she finds herself in a jackpot sometime or in a burning car, God forbid, um, or in a situation outside her own home where she seems to control it, um, you know, cops would be the first ones ones there to help her. They they help people like Jennifer. 
They don't, you know, they don't sit down and have a chat and, you know, just how stupid are you, ma'am? Uh, they don't do that. They help everyone. Um, and so, you know, you, Jennifer is probably, um, she probably makes sure kids get three meals a day and, and such. Um, but, you know, I've met people like Jennifer and I would imagine her husband's probably much, pretty much the same thing. Um, and if they get in a situation, God forbid, but if they get in a situation away from the compound, um, cops will be there to help them just like everybody else, just like you and me, uh, because that's what they do. All right. Let's go to, um, thank you, Mike. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Mike and, uh, Mike and Joshua. Oh, that's odd. Another, uh, another Joshua call. Mike, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Mike? Jennifer and I just started dialing the phone. Beg your pardon? When I heard Jennifer, I started dialing the phone. I, I, I am embarrassed for the whole town. That is absolutely asinine. I know, I know police officers here in town. I've got friends that are, that, one of them that are cops here. They wouldn't ask her how she feels about them before they come to help her. Exactly. They would just do it. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I just said. Doesn't matter uh, where you are, where you live, uh, who you are, what you think. Uh, cops not going to sit down and have a little chat over coffee with you to find out what you think about things. He's just going to do his duty or her duty and uh, you know try to make a bad situation better. Oh boy, I say I, I hope I don't know this girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hear Joshua's down here, and I hope she's not one of them. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Joshua's pretty small town, so you know. Uh, and there, and and in defense, there is no bad part of town here. Uh, Quite honestly, you got to go outside the city limits <laughs> to find that. <laughs> well, you know, I was trying to trying to draw an analogy for her, but I'm not exactly sure she understood what an analogy hey, is. So, you know, when you wrestle with pigs, you both get dirty, and the pig enjoys it. <laughs> Mike, good representative of the town of Joshua. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, sir. Two twenty-five. The time. Back with your calls. I don't. I haven't even started the show yet, Jennifer. Thank you. You started the show for me. God bless you, and I mean that sincerely. And uh, and your husband, if he's laying on the couch drunk, one eight hundred two eight eight WBAP one eight hundred two eight eight nine two two seven. Your calls. Well, hang on a second. It might be unfair. To, to Jennifer, I mean, some of the things that were coming out of her mouth that were were hard to, to stomach. It, uh, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Jennifer, forgive me. I didn't mean to be ugly. I wish you only the best, and certainly for your children, I wish only the best. But Jennifer, I think, I think Alan Jackson said it best. Time for one more round, set them up. All right, 2.34 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion. And if you ever had any doubt whatsoever as to uh, whether we screen out uh, calls or not, first call of the show should, <laughs> should explain that. No, we don't. We don't. Well, if I can't understand you, we don't put you on the air. Um, but your point of view is yours. Um, and Jennifer certainly had one. Um Cops aren't heroes. She can take care of herself. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, Gary and Hazlitt. Gary, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it very, very much. Uh, how you doing, Gary? Rick, good to see you. Good. Uh, gosh, you know, I haven't called in in a long time, but that last call, I mean, that just got to me. I was kind of devastated. I, I don't mean to be melodramatic, but devastated by the, by the news of this Richardson policeman and uh, dying. And, uh, you know, he's the de – not only is he a hero, he's a definition of a hero. And uh, I, I just – I just can't fathom where do these people come from. You would have never heard somebody say something that ridiculous in, when I was young in my generation. I mean, I don't know where this, this lack of appreciation of the military and of our police force and our – I mean, these people are our heroes. They're the ones who give – who protect and, and, and uh, protect our – our safety and our and our freedoms, 
they deserve the they deserve our reverence and respect and uh you know i just you know some some night when her front door gets kicked in in her gated community i like i would dare her not to consider the cops that arrive a second coming because you know it, when they when they when they show up then they're like a second coming you know i just you know you don't need them until you need them and then then they become the, the heroes that you uh you hear about, and uh, I just can't imagine anybody more ungrateful. And just from a, she must be from a, a spoiled, rotten, given everything in her life, and just lack a total lack of common sense. I just it, it scares me when I hear people like that that they're that dumb. Well, and, and, and I, I can God tell you as thoughts. as a talk show host for a couple of decades now, TV and radio both. I can tell you. It, more, I don't know, more often than not, people people are intelligent enough to make their views known. Uh, but every once in a while, every once in a while, you get someone that comes from such an, and I don't know what the word is. Uh, you know, you, you want to say uneducated, but that doesn't necessarily encompass all of it. But just a really stupid point of view. And then I get a call like that, and it's like, well, I guess I haven't heard everything. Well, God bless our cops and our firefighters, but mostly our policemen. And uh, without them, we'd be in anarchy and a mess. So. That's that's true, Gary. Absolutely true. We would be pure anarchy, and I don't think anyone wants that. And you're right. People that run, uh, you know, to the danger instead of away from the danger, they're heroes. I don't, you know, that look up the definition of hero. Um, and she's tired of hearing about it. Okay. All right. Uh, Rodney in Garland. Rodney, uh, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Rodney? I'm good, Rick. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Well, whenever I heard Jennifer open her mouth and start spewing like a soda can, uh, I, I had to call. I, I normally love to just sit and listen to your show, and uh, sometimes you make me laugh like uh, every time she loved her favorite word, ain't. <laughs> Uh, whenever you would respond, forgive me uh, for that, that, forgive that, me. that at least would bring a little chuckle to me, but, uh, I've known a lot of policemen in my life. Uh, I'm 52 years old. I still have friends that are officers from whenever I was in high school and, uh, rain, shine, good, bad, uh, regardless of whatever it is, I know that they're going to be there if I need them, and they are heroes. The firemen are heroes. Our servicemen are our heroes. I'm thankful for your family service in law enforcement and everything that they've done. Uh, I appreciate everything well, that you. you do to uh, to you know share your stories with us on on things like that, and and really, I just I had to call because i wanted to take take a verbal shot at her and say jennifer if you're listening please move back up north wherever you came from <laughs> so that the <laughs> iq of texas will go back up oh lord rodney i appreciate that you know i i do talk about my family from time to time because i you know they they need to be acknowledged they they do good work um, you know, I was the black sheep and, you know, I try to, I try to do my part. We all do. We all try to do our part. Uh, but if you wear a uniform, um, you stand apart, you know, very uh, few places outside the borders of America. Do you dial two numbers on the phone and have help for anything, anything, uh, somebody's shoot, shooting at you, uh, somebody's, uh, fallen over with a heart attack. It, it doesn't matter. Um, those are heroes, Jennifer. It, uh, I, I'm sorry, they are. I don't know what your definition of a hero is necessarily, but uh, those are heroes to most of us. Frank in Dallas. Frank, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Frank? Oh wow, I'm. I was really disturbed by that first call today with Jennifer, and you know she's part of what our immigration problem is. All the folks from California and New York moving down here to Texas, ruining our state. You know, I uh, I was a former military officer. I was a pilot in the Corps, and when I got out, I had a chance to fly in law enforcement, and I had to think long and hard about it because, you know, I knew that in the Corps as an officer, my greatest threat to me was from spooling up my engine to running it down 
and I was thankful every time, you know, we got home safe. But our policemen, man, they, they are the real heroes. I mean, they are 24-7 a target. And, you know, Jennifer can say, well, he chose to do that. Well, you know what? His wife may not have chosen that, and his kids certainly didn't choose it. And they're orphans now, at least without a daddy. And, and you know, they are the heroes. And I, I just I just wish the folks that have ruined our state and are ruining our state would just move back to the hell, to the, the states they they came from that were already ruined, like California, Connecticut, you know, uh, New York, all, all the Yankee states up there. And, um, you know, I appreciate what your family's done. And I appreciate what that cop's family has done and every policeman's family has done because they're the ones that wait in agony every day, you know, wondering if he's coming home at night or not. And, you know, I knew a little bit of that in the military, but those guys know it every freaking day. So, you know, I will always back our blue and, you know, people like Jennifer, I just hold them with disdain. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, I guess we fight for their right to be stupid, and, and I'm sad that they have to exercise that right. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you, Frank. Thank you for the service, by the way, uh, both uh, in the military and in civilian life. It, um, it, it, something about this hit me in the truck on the way to work. I mean, obviously, I saw the news reports last night, but there was just something about it. You know, maybe it's with all the Black Lives Matters or Yankee Lives Matter or whatever it is. Um, it was just like now a wife has no husband, two daughters have no father because he was helping us. When I say us, I don't mean specifically necessarily, but the populace. He was helping us. He ran toward the danger, not away from it, in order to help us. So, Jennifer, I, 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 you know, I don't know where you're coming from. It would be interesting as a study to figure out your life, how it's been filtered, um, why you have come to, to the rationale that you have, you know. But uh, all I can say is thanks for the call, Jennifer. Pop a top again. I've just got time. at Jennifer's house. Then I'll be gone and you can let some other fool sit down. All right, 2.48 the time. Uh, Rick Roberts with you. Thank you so much. Uh, hope you enjoyed the fill-in yesterday. Uh, took a day off, take care of some things. Uh, back with you live today in the court of public opinion. So I come in, I come in this morning or this afternoon, forgive me, after decades of doing mornings, I'm having to remind myself I'm in the afternoon. Um, first call I get, first call I get was from a woman that doesn't think police officers are heroes. Um, you know, they know what they're getting into. I don't get it. Why they just keep calling themselves heroes. I mean, you know, my husband's a hero. Well, what, what line of work are you in automotive? Um, I won't call nine one one. I can take care of myself, blah, blah, blah. And you know, normally on this show, you know, I point out the, the, the just total idiocy of politicians and there are idiots in, in DC, no doubt. Um, Pelosi, for instance, giving an eight hour speech on the floor, uh, even Democrats were going, good Lord, well, get the hook. Um, and I wonder sometimes, you know, who, who votes for these people? I mean, who, who votes for the Maxine Waters and the Nancy Pelosi's and the Chucky Schumer's and all the, you know, who do they really represent? Well, I think I found out today. You know, maybe I'll I'll do that after somehow at some point in the show we'll do that because I was I was imploring you when I came in. We just had a police officer, a hero, die last night doing what his job. You know, police officers don't get to say, "Oh, wait a minute, we just got a call, man with a gun." That's a bad part of town, man. I don't want to go down there. You know, I don't feel good today. I you know it just. 
you know, let somebody else go do that. Oh, wait a second. They're shooting each, at each other. I, I don't want to go over there. Uh, these men and women run to the conflict, not away, away from it. And for this police officer, 14 year old, uh, 14 veteran, um, his wife no longer has a husband. His daughters no longer have a father. And I want, I was trying to get people to wrap their head around that. Was it a horrible accident? Was it something unfortunate? Was it a disease? No. He was doing his job. Going to help someone that he knew nothing about, nothing about the circumstance other than what came in on the radio call, whatever it was. Um, But he still went. He didn't get to say, well, wait a second. Did you you say they're shooting at people? Oh, I don't want to go do that. That's what police officers and deputies and law enforcement in general does. They help you no matter what you think of them, no matter what the situation is. And I was just trying to get people to wrap their head around that. And I get a call from Jennifer. So, David, um, capture that call, if you will, because, you know, maybe she makes my point as I sit here and think about this. Maybe she makes my point better than I could ever make it myself. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so, yes, sir, I do. So I want you to capture that call from beginning, hello, to okay. end. Uh, when I, I, I don't know, I think I was as polite as I was going to be. Oh, trust me, that call is going to go up on the website. Uh, that uh, that uh, that just about uh, you know stretches the bonds of my niceness, shall we say. You know, I always pretend like my grandmother's in earshot, and her favorite word was decorum. And my grandfather used to say, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Um, So I keep that in mind. I have a temper, there's no doubt, and I lose it from time to time. But generally not with calls. This is is what I do for a living and have done for several decades. And not everybody's going to agree with me. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, if all of us were exactly the same, a lot of us wouldn't be necessary. But that's not even what this was. This was something out of the realm. You know, uh, it. uh, I'm not exactly sure what this was. Uh, But I'm gonna. If you're on hold, if you've been patient enough uh, to be on hold, I'm going to take each and every one of your calls. I promise you that. I mean, what I was going to talk about, I can either get to now or get to later. Um, but I think it's important to remember someone that served all of us, no matter what we thought, that served Jennifer. Now, I want you to think about this. This man died, and you shot in the neck, I believe, uh, died going to do his job. And at one point, I think she said the job was stupid. Well, that well may be, but in your mind. But this man was shot and killed, his wife, now a widow, his daughters, without a father, doing his job, going to help someone. No matter their point of view, no matter their political affiliation, didn't matter Republican, Democrat, cops don't pull up, excuse me, are you a Republican or a Democrat? We just need to know before we pull up in the driveway and help you. They don't do that. They don't pull up in the driveway and say, excuse me, is your name Jennifer? Are you an idiot? They don't do that. They, with without regard for your personal beliefs, are there to render aid and defend you if you need defending. So at some point, uh, we'll we'll do that, that call again uh, during the show. And all of you on hold, Steve, Mike, Terry, Cammie, Marty, uh, hang on. I will get to your call. I promise you your day in the court of public opinion. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk, 820 WB. Oh, there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts. Right now. And good afternoon, 304 the time. Rick Roberts back with you live in the court of public opinion. Thank you so much for allowing me uh, the day off. And my thanks to uh, to Grant Stinchfield for coming in. He's a great guy. And uh, uh, I had to do some things, got some things done. Back with you. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, the first call I take today was a call that, that quite honestly, 
the response you heard from me was was pure response. You know, it wasn't something choreographed or produced or canned or any of that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make an executive decision since it's called the Rick Roberts Show. I should be able to do that. Uh, I'm going to play that call for you at 4 o'clock, right after the top of the hour. All right? Um, as I was driving in, and it's not the first uh, law enforcement death that I've talked about on the show. As a matter of fact, we talked about quite a few. But for some reason, this uh, Richardson police officer uh, that was killed, 14-year veteran, and, you know, maybe it's the Black Lives Matter thing. Maybe, I, I don't know. It probably It's probably, if I were to be honest with you, which I try to be, uh, I think it's probably a culmination of things. Um, but I, I was just wondering if people, aside from hearing the news story, oh, that's too bad. Uh, but if I, I wanted you to dwell on it for a second. Now, I'm not trying to be insensitive or macabre or any of that. It just, I want you to think about that. You know, with everybody, you know, starting with Obama trying to, you know, I don't know if he was trying to federalize the police force, uh, regional police force or what, but, you know, starting with uh, Ferguson, Missouri, and then New York, and then uh, Chicago and Los Angeles, it's like, you know, every time they got a chance, they would throw a cop under the bus before the evidence was even in. Do cops make mistakes? Of course they do, but not very often. Uh, you know, maybe it was that that uh, narrative climate that uh, hit me. You know, veteran Richardson police officer David Sherrard was killed in the line of duty last night, Wednesday, February 7th, 2016. And I just wanted people to dwell on that for a second other than hear the story and go, oh, that's too bad. Well, it's more than too bad. You know, here is a representative from law enforcement, has been for 14 years, and they all, men and women, run to the danger, not away from it. They run to it so we don't have to. They stand between us and the people that would come to take our property or even take our lives. And I, we started something on the show called The Good Cop Story, and we'll continue to do that because there's... I mean, cops do something good every single day, but you never hear about that because it doesn't make the news. Um, a woman is without a husband, daughters without a father. Why? Because he did his job. And he did his job unwaveringly. He, he, he ran to the danger, not away from it, and was shot and, and killed. Officer David Sherrard, badge number 1078, end of watch, 2718. And that's why I brought it up, because that should impact all of us. Because he could have just as easily been running to help you or your brother, your sister, your mother, anybody. And the first call I get, and I won't even try to describe it, it's indescribable was from a woman named Jennifer in Joshua <clears throat> saying, why do we keep calling them heroes? We hear too much of this stuff. They're not heroes. You know, it's a stupid job. Why would, you know, I can take care of myself. I wouldn't call 911. You know, you have to hear the call. And as she was talking, I'm thinking, God forbid, from my mouth to his ear, the one never experiences anything where she needs help. But police officers, deputies, law enforcement in general would run to help her, risking their own life for somebody they don't even know. You know, it's one thing for, you know, a family member to, to put themselves in harm's way to save another family member. Here's a guy with a badge and a uniform that gets up every morning, and it doesn't matter who you are. You could even be a Jennifer. It doesn't enter into it. He just does his job. And we've lost far too many. Far too many. All right, 310 the time. This is Steve. Steve, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Steve? I was doing pretty good until I heard that first call, man. I'll tell you what, that's, that's really got me bothered because that's not, 
that's not just stupidity speaking. That that's a heartless, wretched woman right there. She does not realize, evidently, that that police officer was a human being, you know, who, like you said, had a wife and two kids. I'll tell you what, Jennifer, are you stupid enough and heartless enough to look that grieving widow in her eyes and tell her that her husband was not a hero? Are you stupid and heartless enough to get down on the level eye to eye with those two little girls and tell those little girls that their daddy was not a hero? Lady, you've had some issues. And I'll tell you what, if you ever did do that and you were dumb enough and heartless enough to do it, I bet you would need police assistance at that moment. <laughs> Steve, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking how many people, I mean, there are some, but how many people do you know where you could, uh, you know, simply dial the phone and say, I need you to risk your life to save mine? Uh, brother, <laughs> There's only a handful of people that exactly, would do that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, only a handful. You know, the, these these officers and even firefighters and soldiers, uh, you know, they are they found a calling. They found a purpose, and that's to serve others. To serve others, that that's one of the greatest things you can do for mankind is to serve your fellow man. And to be disrespected like that, my God, lady, you have some deep issues. You you need a psychiatrist or something. I, I feel I would not want to live in your head, lady. Uh, Steve, I appreciate the call, and um, I, I'm going to say it. I agree with him. I agree with the guy. Steve, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll play that call. This is one of those calls you don't get very often, and I'm glad because if I got it more than once in a blue moon, I would be – horribly worried about the state of society but i'm going to play that for you right at four o'clock right after the news let's go to uh mike and wiley mike thank you for waiting how you doing mike hey doing fine thanks for taking my call you bet man what a what a leadoff hitter for your show today set the total direction i and you know i, got I i've got stack you. you can ask david uh as a matter of fact let, let me just kind of pull the curtain back for you a little bit mike um Right before we went to air, you were in here. What were we doing in here? Oh, we were discussing what we were going to go over for today's show. Right. We were going through stacks of stories. I was going through sound that you've pulled. Um, and then I get the call that, as Mike correctly points out, totally directed the show. That is 100% correct. <clears throat> yes. And uh, where do you start with that? And you did you did call time out. You tried to walk her over on the field of intelligence, walk her through it, let her hear herself, say something that ignorant, and you were trying to point it out, but she wouldn't shut up enough to allow you to make your uh, counterpoint. And my assumption is, is this Jennifer girl must be super hot because what husband can come home to that lack of intelligence to sit down at the dinner oh, table and, 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 and be able to carry on a conversation. Heck, how would you like to go to a dinner party and and her open her mouth? You, you would start getting all kinds of looks going, hey, yeah, I know she's hot, but oh, my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I just had to call. I just had to call, Rick, because, uh, like I said, very few calls will make me stop in my tracks to dial the phone. But your leadoff hitter today did, and I do I do ask Jennifer, I'm not going to call you names, Jennifer, but please, please educate yourself what you did. And if you listen to that call, as Rick said, in about 20 years and say, Jennifer, this was you 20 years ago over the airwaves in Dallas, I think she would be very embarrassed. And well, if I was her husband, I think she'd be he's, – he's embarrassed too. You know, I, I look at it this way. You know, my point was to point out how the death of anyone in law enforcement, sheriff's department, police officers, um, you know, people that are willing with simply three numbers, 911, are willing to, get, if they have to, Correct. give up their lives to save somebody they don't even know. Um, you didn't have the vision. I hope, I hope that that impacts people to where they... They, every, you know, every once in a while, we think about stuff all the time, Mike. I mean, it doesn't matter. We right. think about things. Right. But every once in a while, we stop and go, wow, it, it, how impactful that really is. It's worth more than a fleeting thought. 
exactly. And I I did. I applaud you for trying to at least walk her through the field of intelligence to allow her to hear herself. And you tried to point that out, but you never – she kept dragging you back over to – you know, to the dumb field and, and well, if, if she's still listening, if Jennifer, if you are still listening and I, look, I'm not trying to be ugly. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't tear people apart on the show. Um, some guys do that. I don't, if I have to do that, I'll do something else. Uh, but I'm going to play that call again at four Oh five. So Jennifer, if you're still listening and it's not too late in the day, Pop a top again. Then you may want to listen to it, all right? It may make you think about it in a different way. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk, 820 WBAP. Five zero. Uh, I suppose somebody called and asked, and I suppose it's true. Uh, a good portion, if not all the show uh, this afternoon has been dedicated to Officer David Sherrard, badge number 1078, end of watch 2718. Um, and it's, Jennifer, all because of you. Uh, that this show is pretty much dedicated to his memory. So if you're family, friends, uh, I would never, ever uh, call a uh, grieving family to come on the air. But if your friends or family uh, of this officer or fellow officers, um, you know, try to try to get in if you can. As a matter of fact, David, uh, the next call, maybe try to keep that line open if you can. Um, if your friends or family of Officer Sherrard, uh, you want to share uh, some memories of uh, this fallen officer, uh, please do so. All right, let's go to uh, Terry in Dallas. Terry, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Terry? I'm doing great, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, actually, my daughter went to school with him, and she said, Mom, they were high school sweethearts. Um, and so it's just sad. But um, the reason I'm calling, my son was also in the military, Um he was a Marine Corpsman, a medic, and now he's a Dallas Sheriff. Uh, you, must and be very, you must be very proud. I am, Rick. I am. But that poor Jennifer, I don't know what rock she crawled out from underneath, but my four-year-old granddaughter has more sense than that girl does. Um, and that's putting it nicely. <laughs> it was, you um, know, under under different circumstances, I, I would say it's almost shocking to have that yes. point of view. Is it not? Yes, yes, absolutely. And but I just have one message for that Jennifer girl. Every night, my son, badge number one zero one two, puts on that bulletproof vest to protect and serve. And Jennifer, he is my hero. Well, law enforcement as our first responders, Terry, um, are heroes because. Who do we call when we need help? Who do we call when our life is in danger? Who do we call when the worst possible... Think about this. Law enforcement, yeah, even firefighters to a certain extent, they see us. They come in contact with the public at, the, in some cases, the worst possible moments of our life. Think about that. And they're expected, and they do, carry out their duty level, even-handed, um, there are exceptions to that rule, but not many. Uh, I know the news media tries to blow it up every time uh, there's a bad shooting or something, but for the most part, every man and woman in a uniform that comes in contact with another human being, in many cases at the worst possible time in that individual's life, they're still calm, collected, and they do their duty to protect life and property. I'm sorry, Jennifer, not everybody's wired that way. We ought to be proud that we have people that wear the badge and can do the job. All right, uh, 333 the time. Welcome. The Court of Public Opinion, The Rick Roberts Show. Rick Roberts back with you live. Uh, And as promised, I'm going to get to each and every one of your calls. Uh, The show began uh, talking about uh, Officer David Sherrod, badge number 1078, end of watch 2718. He was shot and killed last night. 
And as I was driving in, it's obviously with family and law enforcement, it's not the first police officer uh, shooting and death that I've heard of. But for some reason, this impacted me because, you know, how many people will just uh, see that on the news? Oh, that's too bad. And then go on to something else. I mean, that's human nature. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong. That's just how we were wired up as humans. And I thought about that for a second. A wife now is widowed. Two daughters now no longer have a father because he was just doing his job. Maybe it's because the Black Lives Matter thing or we had a administration that threw cops under the bus on a regular basis, whatever it happens to be. But it impacted me. So I started with that when I came on the air. And the first call, I mean, the very first call I got was from someone named Jennifer. I'm not even going to try to describe the call. I will play for uh, for you the call in its entirety just after the 4 o'clock news, coming up in about 25 minutes. In the meantime, as promised, your calls, Cammy in Dallas. Cammy, thank you for waiting. Hi, Cammy. Hi. Um, thank you for taking my call. And the first thing I want to say is I lift my prayers up to uh, Officer Sherrard's family, his friends, and his co-workers. Um, he is a hero. Now, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. Okay. Um, my son is 31 years old. He had always wanted to be a police officer. And then when 2000, when 9-11 happened, he decided he wanted to go into the military. So he just got out of 10 years in the Navy as a bomb tech. And then he got out, and he's going to go, He's in April, he's going to start the training for a Dallas police officer. Good for him. Good for him. Yes. They need him. Yes. And my oldest daughter, she's 12 years older than my son, she served in the Air National Guard for six years. We are a military family. And one thing I taught my kids, which I was taught, is you respect the uniform. You respect the man behind the uniform, whether it be police officer, fire department, whoever. And that man was a hero. I'm very emotional because I just got so emotional <laughs> listening to this woman put down the police department. They're all heroes. And they go, like you said, they go into places where the rest of us are running out. And they deserve our respect. Uh, thank you. Anytime I see an officer anywhere, I thank you. I thank him for what he does. Same way with the military. I don't know where she was raised or, you know, anything about her, but I'm a Christian, so I can't really come up with any words. <laughs> that no, I, I, I get you. And, but... I will pray for her heart to be changed. It'll be hard, but <laughs> I still will pray for her heart to be changed because that is so small-minded and not open. She doesn't seem to have empathy. This man's family is without him anymore. No more Christmases, no more, you know, family reunions, no more walking the, the daughters down the aisle no more anniversaries no more nothing and he did it because it was his job and he was a hero he went in there full force and did his duty and he was killed and i think we all should say a prayer for his family his friends his co-workers because i don't know what country she thinks she's from but this is america and we honor our military, our police department, and our fire department. I take snacks constantly to the fire departments. I live in Rowlett, in the fire departments and the police departments. It's not much, but it's just my way of saying thank you. You take your life in your hands every time you put on that uniform and get in that car. And it is, to me, they should be, if I was in the military, I'd be saluting them every time I could. And... They're heroes, all of them are heroes in my book, and you're a hero for bringing this up. And and I know you didn't know Miss Jennifer would call, but to honor his memory, that the beginning of the show, I listen to WBAP all the time, and to see, hear you honor him brought me to tears. Um, but it's 
it's just I can't believe there are people like that. Well, I think, world. I think. well, first of all, Cammie, thank your son for his service, your daughter as well, and, and yourself for, for what you do. I, I suppose, you know, when you talk for a living and talk to people for a living, which is what I do and what I've done for decades, um, sometimes people come up with things that is so foreign to your ear. Not, I'm not talking about difference of political opinion. I'm not talking about differences in legislation. I'm not talking about... Uh, differences uh, from an ideological standpoint. I'm just talking about something that runs so counter to the human condition. Something that absolutely there is no fiber in my being that can relate. I, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. Um, you know, dissenting viewpoints get on the show first. Because I truly want to know why they think the way they think. Uh, people that disagree with whatever it is, I mean, I'm in the opinion business. I make no uh, illusions about being a newsman uh, or any of that. Uh, I'm a talk show host. I'm opinion driven. Um, but people I don't agree with and people I have a visceral reaction to, you know, perhaps it's not in my own best interest, but I want to know why they think that why they think the way they do. It's not so much the conclusion they've come to, but how did you come to that conclusion? Do you see what I'm saying, Cammie? Um, anyway, all the best to you and your family. Good call. I appreciate it, and thank you for uh, the kind words about Officer uh, David Sherrard. Let's go to uh, Marty. Marty in uh, Spokane, Washington. Marty, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Well, it's my pleasure, Rick. Um, I just want to echo the previous caller's sentiment that uh, our hearts and prayers go out to the family of this fallen officer and and his extended family in his department. Um, the camaraderie in a in a police department is beyond description. Um, I spent 20 years in law enforcement myself, and um, I can't <clears throat> I can't tell you what it's like to go to a police officer's funeral. And excuse me for getting angry, Rick, but if this woman had any guts, she would go to this officer's funeral and stand there in reverence to this man for laying down his life for a community. It, it is beyond comprehension how somebody can say the things that she said. I defend her right to say it, but she better be thankful there's no law against being stupid in public because she'd be in jail. <laughs> but it, one it's, thing it I was did... tough to understand uh, the premise uh, from from the premise where where these ideas, uh, these these positions on on the social experiment. I mean, it was hard to understand where that came from. Yeah. Um... One thing struck me, though, and I, and I think I may have come to a conclusion about her background since she wasn't real forthcoming about it. I think she's got a sister named Debbie in Rancho Bernardo, California. Debbie, you know what I'm talking Debbie about? Debbie in Rancho Bernardo, <laughs> California. Yeah. Back oh, in your oh, KFW, oh, 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 yes. Yeah, back in the <laughs> KFMB days, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was hoping you'd get that reference, but <laughs> I was thinking Rancho um, Bernardo in Texas. I've tried to block out so much of California. I was thinking Rancho Bernardo. No, we're oh California. Yes, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but um, you know, it, when I was in law enforcement, I didn't want to be considered a hero because if if somebody was labeled that as a hero, and and I had instances in my career that people said, well. You know, you're a hero for doing what you did. No, 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 I'm doing my job. But the, the connotation of hero means that something bad happened to somebody. And, yeah, there was probably a good outcome from it. But at the same time, uh, it, it meant there was a life-changing uh, event that occurred in someone's life. And that was the last thing you wanted to do. And my wife, God bless her, right. she knew every night that I left for work and I I kept a patrol car here at the house. We had take home cars. Right. And she knew every night that she gave me a hug and kiss and I could tell that 
she always treated it like it was going to be the last time that she would she would ever do that. But she she toughed it out and she supported me a hundred percent. But um, I, I just uh, I, I I'm dumbfounded by the mentality of that phone call. It was just it, my jaw dropped. I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Now I will defend her on one issue. She did say that that a lot of people do heroic things all the time and don't get recognition. Well, that's true. But not a lot of people go to work every day in the military, in firefighting, law enforcement, heck, even our truckers. Our truckers have to deal with hundreds of miles every day with morons around them trying to navigate through traffic and things to move this nation's economy. They don't do it to be called a hero. They do it because it's their job. And it's called a thin blue line for a reason. It's because law enforcement is the only thing that keeps us safe from those that wish us harm. Well, listen, I appreciate the kind words for uh, Officer Sherrard. Uh, I appreciate a well-thought-out call. Uh, I'm going to have that call. I mean, there's no way I can't play it again. I mean, my email is like a ticker tape in here. Um, And uh, many of you are calling, you only caught part of it, or you came uh, in after the show. So uh, right after Eric Bushman at the top of the hour, um, in about 22 minutes or so, I will replay the call its entirety from where I said hello to where, however, I said goodbye, if I did. Um, So we'll do that for you coming up. And if you're on hold, I promise you your day in the court of public opinion. The Rick Roberts Show on News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, uh, 3.50 the time. As promised, back to your calls. Tina, Tina in Longview, you've been very, very patient. How you doing, Tina? I'm doing fine, Rick. Um, I have a message for Jennifer. I was very, very upset about her phone call and what she had to say about law enforcement. Um, and as we say in Texas, bless her little heart. Anyway, my, hus- my husband was a police officer, a sheriff, and he is now a J.P., Years and years, I watched him get up in the morning, put on his bulletproof vest. He had a a very heavy one because he wanted to make sure he came home to me that night, right? All of the stuff that he has to put on for protection. When he walked out that door, he didn't ask where he was going. He didn't ask anybody's uh, political affiliation. He didn't ask what they thought about police officers. He did his job. And for her to sit there, she has a problem with them being heroes. Well, let me tell you what. And this is from experience of knowing the things that he would come home and tell me. When he's pulling somebody's child out of a car that's been wrecked uh, because of an accident, he's somebody's hero. When he busts a window because there's a pet in a car or a child in the car because it's too hot, he's somebody's hero. When he comes up on a scene where there's been a robbery and all of the customers or the people are upset, he's somebody's hero. When he was a detective and he had to solve crimes, murders, and all these kind of things, when he would look that mother in the eye and say, I'm going to do everything in my power to find who, who killed your child, he was somebody's hero. I don't understand that kind of process of thinking. She is very ungrateful. She is very immature. But let me tell you, officers all over the state of Texas and all over our country, they're all heroes for what they do yes it's their job yes they sign up for it but it's not an easy job and those of us that live with family members that are part of law enforcement we have a profound respect for everything that they do and we know the danger we live in danger as well so on behalf of uh, police officers wives and family members i hope that Jennifer turns her thought process around. I hope that she appreciates what these officers do on a daily basis every single day all over this country. And I hope and pray that one day, maybe, I hope she never needs it, but when she does need it and she picks up that phone and dials 911, that officer will come and save her just like they do with anybody else. Uh, there's nothing I can add to that except uh, thank you and uh, thank your uh, your husband for his service. Um, there's nothing I can say. I can't add to that. Uh, thank you very, very much, Tina. I appreciate your patience. Thank you, Rick. All right. Um, 
yeah, it, uh, it, look, there's no way for me to describe this. Jennifer, perhaps if you're still listening and I'm sure you are, um, I, I gotta say your, your call shocked me a bit. It's not one of those things where I would have bet money. I'd never hear a call like that. I probably have heard something similar over the course of a couple decades, but, um, you know, especially with the climate we're in, we just had five police officers ambushed in downtown Dallas uh, this past summer doing what? Protecting the people that were protesting them. You know, don't don't tell me these people aren't heroes. Uh, I would suggest you invest some of your kid's college fund into a Merriam-Webster college uh, dictionary and look up hero. And I'm not trying to be cute. I'm trying to be very specific. All right. What I'm going to do, uh, because, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous, uh, the number of emails and people calling in that want to know about the call. I'll play the call in its entirety right after the top of the hour. All right. Uh, from where I say hello to however it ended. Um, and I don't recall. I just know it did. Uh, but I did spend some time trying to bring her around to some common sense thought. I don't think I succeeded in that effort, but you'll be the judge. We'll do that for you next. Eric Bushman standing by in the WBAP newsroom, the very latest breaking news. And I'll take your calls. If, uh, you know, somebody asked, why are you talking about this? Well, because I have full lines and these people have been waiting a very long time. If you have the patience to wait uh, until I can get to your call, the very least I can do is get to your call. Understood? All right. Uh, 3.55 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion. I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts. Right now. All right, four minutes after the hour. Uh, the biggest part of the show dedicated to Officer David Sherrard that was uh, killed last night, Richardson police officer. Um, the very first call I took this afternoon, I mean, I literally sat down behind the microphone, put my papers in order. You heard the open. And the lines fill up, as they generally do. The very first call I took was from someone named Jennifer. I had been talking about the fact that I believed Officer David Sherrard uh, was a hero. He ran, as all police officers do, male or female, into a situation uh, he had very limited knowledge of in order to help to possibly save lives and in turn lost his own. For that, I believe him to be a hero. Well, this is the call, the very first call that came in um, this afternoon. I mean, I literally, I hadn't even had a, a sip of coffee, and I, I got this call. Okay, let's try it this way. All right, let's go to uh, Jennifer, Jennifer and uh, Joshua. Jennifer, thanks for waiting. Hi. Yeah, you know, uh, hello. I, I, I just have a problem with everybody. You know, the cops aren't the only ones that go to work out there. There's a lot of people that have important jobs as well, but we don't talk about them. Well, when tell they me, care. tell me about a few, Jennifer. Well, you know, I know people that. In my town, everybody in, in my town is important in the jobs that they okay, do. Okay, well, tell me, tell me about a few of those jobs. Uh, well, there's um, let's see, there's a uh, a pharmacy down the road. You know, uh -huh. everybody needs you know medicine when they get sick. Right. But when you you know just say the pharmacist gets killed, you ain't gonna hear nothing about that on on the radio. No, I gonna... no, I I ain't uh, because quite honestly, pharmacy. But pharmacists in general aren't usually killed by uh, by the pills they uh, they dispense, are they? Well, no, no, they're not. But okay. you know, say that uh, I, I just don't understand why everybody is 
I, I, what I can't stand is everybody calling them heroes. I mean, I, I would go to somebody if they needed okay. help. Okay, wait, wait, wait a second, was, Jay. Let's was, let's not let's not go too fast. Oh, All right, you yeah. don't. What is it you don't understand again? Here, people, them being called heroes. I can. I mean, I hear it so often. It's just. It's like it's overdone. They they overdo it. Okay, well, they, well, they tell me, tell me, heroes. tell me. Excuse me. Yeah, I said they even call themselves heroes. They I, are. I I, you know, if I went, and I, I, I tell you what, Jennifer. Aid, if, let me right let now? me ask you something. Go ahead. If if it's four o'clock in the morning, God forbid, and I hear glass breaking in my kitchen, I'm upstairs asleep, and let's say I had a family. I, I don't. Like I don't. But let's say I had a couple kids down the hall, um, and a wife. Um, you know, I would, I would get my weapon. I would take up a position between the perceived threat and my family and I would call nine one and hope they got there before I had to shoot somebody. Should I call you, Jennifer? Well, I would, I would come, but you know, no, yeah. I know you, I know you wouldn't call me because it's already a, a government set up program that the police come, you know, that's yeah, what well, the police, you're right. I'm the not police run come. From no, you know, if, if I was being threatened by somebody or if I heard, if I saw somebody being threatened uh -huh. by somebody else. I would not run. I would go towards them to help them. What's what's even the worst? Had, if, what's the, the person, worst part of your town, Jennifer? The worst part of my town? The most crime-ridden part of your town. Oh uh, well, it's it's a really small town, so. Well, it, Joshua, it, I know that, but I mean, there's it, every town has a side of town you don't want to be caught in after dark. You know that. Cleburne. That's uh, where I'll say. Okay. Cleburne, right down if, the road. If somebody calls you at two o'clock in the morning, says we hear shots being fired and screams in Cleburne. Um, we need your help. Are you going to get in the car and go down there? I would. I wouldn't be scared, but that's, you know, I don't get paid for it. I don't get a paycheck for it. Okay. They just get a paycheck for it. Okay, and if so, they have kids, so, maybe they shouldn't do that job. So, so what? what is it exactly that has your nose out of joint about this? Because I don't understand. It's not just this one. It's, it's hearing so much about it on the radio every time it happens. It's like, you know, my husband, I, I, you know, he's my hero. You know, but you if, if something were to happen to him, you ain't going to be hearing no, anybody say anything no, about him being a hero. But No, he is. no, I My ain't going to probably talk about your husband because he doesn't get up every morning with a target on his back and go out and stand between innocent civilians and the bad guys. Well, I'm glad he's not that stupid. He's not that stupid? Yes, to be to to be do that job. So you think being a police no, officer No, stupid, Jennifer, think... Jennifer, you have to let me talk. It's call okay, called the conversation. Go so ahead. you think being a police officer in law enforcement is a stupid job? No, I don't think it's stupid. Well, that's what you just you said. And get that kind of a job that that you know what you know what to expect. You're going to be going after criminals. Yeah. So you're going to, you know, they they know what 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 to expect when they get that job. Of course they, they do, and they still take the job. I'm. They ain't doing thank it. Thank God to they do. Me. They what? Because I don't call them. I, what did you say? I said they ain't doing it to protect me because I don't call them. Why? Maybe they. Well, Jennifer, maybe they ain't. But why is it you don't call the cops? I don't need the protection because I can take care of myself. Oh, I see. I got a husband that takes care of me. You yeah. know, I'm I'm not scared. Okay. I guess. Okay. Well, you may not be scared, but in my opinion, you're extremely stupid. But I never, I don't want to be ugly about that. Um, God's blessings on you, and I hope, uh, I hope you never have to need a, a police officer or a sheriff's deputy. Um, you know, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's just the way it goes. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I totally disagree with your call. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say, oh, well, you got a point because you don't. You're coming from a point of complete idiocy, but that's my opinion, and we're all entitled to them, right? Yeah, you're right. You know, I know okay. you have law enforcement background. You tell us about it every single day on the radio. Yeah, because I think, quite honestly, I'm not. You don't have I'm no not. I'm not. I'm not wired to do it, so I didn't you have do no it. Other talking points, but to tell about yourself every day on the radio that we all know about. We hear about your family every well, why day. Well, why do you know? Huh? Why do you know? K nine unit and you, your daughter's. Well, how daughter. do you know that? Because I hear it every... So you listen to my show every day, even though you've got nothing to say good about it. So, Jennifer, I appreciate you being a listener very, very much. Um, and, and tell me about your family. I'd love to know about your family. What do you want to know about my family? Uh, anything. What do you want to tell me? Well, I'm I'm living here down in... I'm in Texas, and I'm, I'm a... My family's, you know, Yankees. We're Yankees, so... You know, I don't what, really what know is, what you want to know about. That, I have, I have a if you're a Yankee, you're you're really old because that was a civil war. Where are you from? Where am I from? 
um, you keep uh, asking me a question after I ask you a question. I you know that. Tell you any of that well, because that's not part of the topic. Well, I it's ask a question. Topic, topic, I ask you a question. <laughs> do you work? Do I work? Of course I do. What kind of work do you do? In in the automotive industry. Okay. I'll just say. All right. You got kids? Yes. Okay. Um, hopefully those kids will never need a law enforcement official around. Be, but you're here to tell me that you and your husband can take care of that job, right? Well, no, I, I, I guess my kid will probably uh, grow up knowing that his mom and dad will protect him until he can protect himself. Okay, so he won't need any assistance from anyone. Well, I hope not. No, I hope not. I, I got to say, Jennifer, and I don't mean to be ugly at all. I really don't. But you are the dumbest woman I think I've ever talked to. And I've talked to a lot uh, over the years. But, uh, Jennifer, uh, hopefully you got a chance to listen to yourself. Uh, Would you like to change any of that up just a little bit? Any at all? Where, Where is Jennifer's theme song? Do you have Jennifer's theme song? I mean, I th- I think we do. Pop a top again. I've just got time for one more round. Set them up, my friend. Then I'll be gone and you can let some other fool sit down. WBAV. All right, welcome back. 419 the time. Let's get to your calls. Jim in Saginaw. Jim, thank you for waiting. I appreciate your patience. How you doing, Jim? Good. How are you? Good. I wanted to say, first off, that uh, I'm, I'm a retired police officer. I relocated here from Michigan after I retired. And I wanted to say that Jennifer can say that it's easy or rather, I would say it's easy for Jennifer to say that if you called her at 2 o'clock in the morning because someone was breaking in, that she would come to your rescue because she doesn't have to do it. So she can say, yeah, I'll do it, because she'll never be called upon to do it. And uh, you asked her about where she lived and uh, whether or not there were uh, – a bad part of town, and she mentioned the next community over. Uh, obviously, she doesn't live with the people that she thinks are from the bad part of town, or she would have a different opinion of those people. But, uh, gee, there's so many things I want to say here. <laughs> you sound lost in your thoughts a little bit there. I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but you seem a little lost in your thoughts, Jim. Yeah, Um I'm trying to catch up here. I think someone had said, I don't know if it was you or a caller, who said that you don't know where she's coming from. And I have dealt with people like her for most of my career. They, She has either had a bad experience with law enforcement or someone she knows has had bad experience. So that's where her opinions flow from there. And I know a police officer, I know of a police officer, I worked with them, who died in the line of duty. And it is a very, very difficult experience for those who work in that line of work as a police officer and those who know them and the families of those officers who have died. But And I, and I want to say that he is definitely a brave man because as it has been said many times, when something bad is happening, as everybody's running away from it, the police are running towards it. And they run towards it knowing full well that they may not uh, survive it when they get to it. And uh, just finally, I just wanted to say there's an old adage that uh, you may uh, not believe in God, that is your choice. And you may not believe in guns, that is your right, but when someone is breaking into your house, you are going to call somebody with a gun and hope to God they get there in time. True, very true, Jim. I appreciate the call very much. Brooke, uh, Brooke, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Brooke? 
I am good. How are you? I'm good. I, I'm not mad at Jennifer. <laughs> I feel bad for the girl. I don't think she understands what she real means or is. She's one of those people like everybody gets a trophy kind of thing. Right. She went, the pharmacist is a hero. He didn't make the drug that's saving people's lives. <laughs> that guy's the hero. That's okay? true, yeah. You're saying you would go and protect whoever called you and you're a hero because that's what you would do? These people do, have done that. They did it's not something they would do. They do it. They do it every day. So it's just you're contradicting yourself. You're just an idiot. You make no sense at all. I hope she's listening, but she's probably talking over me right now. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I'm hoping. You know, sometimes when you step back from yourself, you know, in the moment, we all get tunnel vision and we're obsessed with whatever it is we're talking about. But sometimes if we have a chance to step, step back from ourselves, we can see just how totally ludicrous what we're saying <laughs> seems. Do you, do you know what I mean? I do, I do. So, and another thing to bring to attention is, have you ever thought that maybe you haven't called a cop because that cop has done something already put somebody away already that could have your son could have been the next victim they they could have already saved somebody's life that you love they, and you don't even know it yeah That's... just by putting people away every day and doing what they do brooke you make a lot of sense i appreciate the call uh if you've been patient enough to hold on i will get to your call in the court of public opinion 424 the time I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. Trending now. All right, uh, 433 the time. Let's, uh, as promised, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to go through all of your calls. I promise you that. Dean in Fort Worth. Dean, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Dean? Pretty good. I got two things. Sir. First thing, when are you going to start the GoFundMe page for Jennifer? Um, gosh, I hadn't given it much thought, to be honest because with you. Because she needs to have her tubes tied because she's breeding stupidity. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I don't know that I would go that far. I, I well, don't know. Hopefully, hopefully her son is not following along her footsteps. Uh, she was a little difficult to follow. I will give yeah. you that. Yeah. yeah. And the second thing, I think she was lying about her occupation. Why is that? I think she's a college professor. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, you may be on to something there, Dean. I appreciate the call. Uh, Charles in Denton. Charles, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Charles? Pretty good, Rick. Good to talk to you again. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I was a police officer for 25 years, and I can tell you that cops don't stop being cops once they retire. We will run to danger regardless of when it happens and who it happens to. For example, um, I was living in the socialistic state of Massachusetts, and I was in a Costco one day. Um, I was dressed in my gym clothes, and one of the ladies that was demonstrating a product in the store all of a sudden is chasing a guy through the store. Stop that man. Stop that man. Somebody stop that man. Nobody moved. Everybody just stood there and looked. Well, the cop in me took chase. I was armed. I chased him outside. I didn't know what he had done. I didn't know if he sexually molested her, stole something. I didn't know if he hit her. I was armed. He jumped in the car, put the car in drive. I was standing right in front of the car, and I ordered him out of the car at gunpoint. Fortunately, the cops were over in the next plaza. They came over. It turned out to be pretty much nothing. He had called her some very vulgar names. But this woman was overwhelmingly glad that I stepped in and stopped this guy when nobody else would do anything. And again, I didn't know who this guy was. I didn't know what he had done, and I didn't know if he was armed. But that's what we do. We, we don't stop and lay down once we retire. Well, I know that uh, from uh, personal experience, I, and I appreciate it, Charles. Uh, appreciate the service. 
I appreciate the call very, very much. Uh, let's go to Misty in Arlington. Misty, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Misty? Oh, I was doing great until um, <clears throat> I heard, <clears throat> sorry, that Jennifer. <laughs> it's a little difficult um, to listen to, wasn't it? Just, had my jaw had a passport, darling, it would be in China. It, it um, <laughs> again, it, what people say doesn't surprise or shock me it it doesn't because i've you know i've been doing this long enough to know that there are all kinds of opinions out there uh, what what bothers me or, or or doesn't bother me so much I, i'm struggling to try to frame the word i want to know why people think what they think does that make sense um, it does make sense unfortunately but when you ain't got nothing but air in between both your ears then you're never going to be able to know how they could think, you know, a certain way. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, it sounds as though... the heart of a black widow spider. The, yeah, it was... I didn't hear any... You know, maybe I missed it. I could have missed it. Maybe uh, any compassion for uh, a fallen officer? I mean, two girls lost their dad, a wife lost her husband. For what? for doing his job, for going to the aid of someone he didn't know. For all he knew, it could have been somebody that felt exactly like Jennifer, and maybe did. Who knows? But that never enters into it. They do their job no matter what. Um, uh, all right. Uh, Misty, I appreciate the call very much. Aaron in Whitney. Aaron, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. Hi, Aaron. Good evening, uh, Rick. Uh, I was calling because uh, I uh, I rang the phone at least 400 times after you called Jim for dumb, and I heard everybody else on the phone, you know, uh, piling on her and all that. But you had to look at why is that? Why is that the case? Why is she railing against it all? And well, we start thinking about it. There's a what about t- ticket quotas? Uh, you want to talk about that? What about a speed draft? What about no? I, I don't uh, want to talk the, about the, that in all, in wait all, wait a, wait a second, Aaron. All you guys are the same. You just keep talking. Well, it's I'm called sorry. a conversation. You talk, I talk, you talk. I mean, I mean, what does a speed trap or a ticket quota have to do with a man losing his life? I'm not. I'm not. That's a false argument. I'm not. I'm not arguing. I'm asking you a question. You brought it up. I'm not saying anything bad about the officer. I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about what is going on. Okay, the the police state continues to expand. The police are continue to be militarized. Oh, we're okay. into militarized police. Is that right? It's getting there every year. Every well, that's year be, that's be, that's because Aaron, you're one of those goofy liberals. Um, I'll tell you why the 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 police officers appear to be militarized it's all perceived because uh, you know, these gun nuts don't know what uh, what they're talking about uh, in most situations cops are outgunned and uh, and that's not a situation you want to be in i don't want the bad guys having bigger weapons than the police do uh, and you shouldn't either uh, and as far as a tactical uniform uh, my son-in-law wears one simply because it's more comfortable it's uh, I mean, you're out there in and out and in and out of the car all day. It's it's more. Ca- well, it looks like it looks military. Well, maybe it is. You know, what's that got to do with anything? You start off the conversation by saying, well, wait a minute. Well, what about ticket quotas? Well, what about speed traps? What the hell does that have to do with a police officer losing his life by a gunshot wound from somebody uh, that he didn't know he was simply going to do his job? Well, what about militarization of the police? What about it? What about it, Aaron? There, I mean, it's a goofy liberal argument. Well, that gun looks pretty dangerous. Well, maybe maybe you should inform yourself as to firearms, and then you won't be scared by something you've not seen except in a movie. Uh, but speaking of of guns, and Aaron, thank you for the call. I couldn't disagree more with you, but that's you know that's not why you called. Um, David Prince, do you know who David Prince is? Yeah, he's uh, he owns a uh, Eagle Gun Range. I was out there not too long ago, um, and he has set up a a raffle. David, are you with me? 
I sure am, Rick. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm looking at uh, a raffle poster. It says, Fallen Richardson, Police Officer, February 7th, 2018. David Sherrard, a 37-year-old Richardson police officer, fallen in the line of duty, survived by his wife, two daughters. And you have a raffle uh, in an effort to do some fundraising. Tell people what you're raffling. This is amazing. We're raffling the uh, it's a AR-15. It's a SCAR. Uh, and it's a 5.56, 30-round magazine. It's iron sights. But the, the biggest piece is, you know, our hearts and prayers go out to this family. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. It's it's bad. But, uh, it's bad. Yeah, it is. But we wanted to give a chance. We're going to raise the money, 100% of the proceeds from this fundraising that's going to go to this family. We're not going to go through any other organization. We're going to write the check directly to them. And our customers over the years have probably raised over $30,000 for police officers and their families. And we've got great great customers. And they come in, and every chance they get to, to help the blue we uh, they step up and do something. So we're we're donating the rifle and we're giving everybody a chance for a ten dollar rifle ticket to uh, for the next month. We're just going to try to raise as much money as we can um, to uh, give this sweet family. Well, that's uh, that's about a three thousand dollar rifle. Um, yes, sir. I mean probably over that, but ten dollars per raffle ticket. There's no limit on raffle tickets or donations. A hundred percent of all the proceeds going to the family of the fallen officer, uh, and the raffle will continue until March 11th, right? Yes, sir. And then we'll draw on March 12th. Uh, we have donations, and if you want to just donate, you can drop it off here. If you want to get a chance to win this uh, FN Scar, it's a uh, it's a really nice rifle that uh, we're just going to donate to the cause and. Hopefully a lot of people will come by and use this opportunity to support the thin blue line that's out there every day, holding the line between us and the bad guys. Well, it would be a sorry state of affairs if we didn't have them. Um, oh, it sure would. Uh, the raffle tickets, by the way, uh, they're available at both the locations, Eagle Gun Range, Louisville, and Farmer's Branch. And if you just want to donate, you can do that, too. I know David Prince personally. He's a good guy, uh, a stand-up guy, and... Uh, this is uh, this is all to benefit that family. David, I appreciate you coming on with me. I hope you'll do it again. Rick, we're honored for the sheep and call me. I appreciate it, brother. All right, David. Thank God you so you. much. David Prince, God bless you. Uh, 4.43, the time. Let me step aside very quickly, check your afternoon drive, and your call straight ahead. Four forty-eight. the time. Let's go to, where am I going? Barbara in Sherman, Texas. Barbara, thank you for waiting. I'm Just sorry about that, Barbara. There you go. Start over again. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, the call from Jennifer uh, that you, you replayed, and I heard it twice. And, and am I correct in thinking that she's from the Northeast? But, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure where she's from. It sounded like she was from there, and that if if that's true, she's just women there think that being rude and nasty she was terribly rude to you personally uh women that think that that's strength, and that's a sad thing when I came from the northeast to Texas six years ago, I had to relearn how to be a woman, and strength here is. Tenderness, kindness, good, really good things, C- compassion, which she lacks. And she thinks she's being strong and opinionated, but that's not that's not strength. And, and that's why if she's from the Northeast, that's why she's talking like that. Well, he, he may be um, or it, she may be. I, I don't know. She um, she obviously. um She's got, she's got some kind of grudge against the cops. I don't know what it is, uh, but it's 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 obvious. Uh, Barbara, thank you. Robert, Robert, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Doing well, Rick. Uh, Aaron and Jennifer are probably not old enough to know this thing that I grew up hearing, but it was it's best to keep your mouth shut and look stupid than to open it and remove all doubt. It's yeah. obvious that. The, that young lady doesn't have a clue. 
I know somebody just like her, and it's uh, it's frustrating to try to communicate with somebody like that. But I wanted to make a broader point. You know, when the information come down that there was this officer down in Richardson, that information spread throughout the law enforcement family pretty quick. And there was a time where nobody knew who it was except for the people that were on the scene. And every single family of every single Richardson law enforcement officer that was on duty at that time spent however much time it was until they finally found out in pure horror concern for their loved one. Yeah. And for somebody to be so selfish and so stupid as to not even be able to muster up enough compassion to understand the gravity of that situation, uh, it, it, it's just beyond. It's 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 beyond my comprehension. I commend you for telling her how stupid she was because obviously nobody has told her that, and she's she's so stupid. She made a statement in that call that she's not scared. She's comfortable. Well, <laughs> she's too stupid. To realize she's not scared. She's not comfortable because she lives in a community where there's law enforcement and good people around them, and she doesn't have any to fear. Well, so it's uh... she's probably go to the Joshua Police Department and thank all of those guys for providing a nice, safe community for her to live in. Well, I would like to see that. I, I don't, I, you know, honestly, Robert, I don't think that's going to happen necessarily. Um, it's, I, I'm not sure. I, again, it's not what people say uh, that upsets me or bothers me. Those aren't the proper terms. I can't find them. It, it's why they believe what they believe or why they have the mindset that they do. That's what I wanted to know. Uh, Lori in uh, Lori in Fate. Lori, thank you for waiting. Hi, Rick. I just wanted to make a brief comment on um, Jennifer. Sure. You know, the, the guy before us was saying that she says she has no fear. Let her be one of the people who is at home while your husband's out being a police officer and see how much fear they have. Because I have a nephew who is a Dallas police officer who has two daughters that are very young. And this one just really hit home. Well, it, it did. I, and I'm not exactly sure why. I've, I've, you know, I've gone through these before. But it, um, uh, for some reason, this one, uh, this one seemed to stand out. Um, well, I'm not sure know, why. He's out doing what he is paid to do what he wants to do, what he feels the need to do, and somebody just shoots him down. And then those, those the poor wife and those little girls, I mean, the, the daughters, they're just, now they're without a dad. Right, right. And Jennifer just seems to have no compassion whatsoever, and I just don't, I don't get it. You know, let her spend some time with that family and see them grieving. And, you know, I just, I don't understand it because... We constantly live with the fear that something might happen, you know, to my nephew. And he le he would be leaving some really little girls. Yeah, it's a it's a it's, it's a tough job. There there's no doubt about it. Um uh you know, your thoughts and prayers uh are appreciated if uh you want to donate. Um uh there are plenty of funds that are set up and of course David Prince, owner of Eagle Gun Range. Uh, they're uh, doing a raffle, a uh, pretty nice firearm. If you're into that, if you don't care about firearms, they're taking donations. Uh, 100% goes to the family. So uh, thoughts and prayers to Officer David Sherrard, badge 1078, end of watch 2718. That's going to do it for me. God's blessings on each and every one of you. Yes, Jennifer, even you. Uh, whether we agree or not, that's always my priority. Stick around. Mark Levin's next. I'll be back with you for your afternoon drive tomorrow at 2 on News Talk 820 WBAP.